Welcome back to Monkey Connection. Today we're sold the new Thinkware U3000 with its external battery. With that, let's get started. So just to clarify, this is not a sponsored video. I purchased my own money. This is my own opinion. So we bought the uh, launch special. So it came with a nice Thinkware spudger. The Thinkware external wiring kit. Of course, the U3000 camera. There we go. And there's our dash cam. So, looks like here's an OBD2 power adapter, which we won't not use for an EV. I heard these are not good for them. Oh, it does say compatible with most vehicles, ICE, EVs, and hybrids. So the last I've been told, um, the Maki does not like the OBT2 power cable. So we definitely will be using the uh, hard wire and won't be using this at all. Uh, if you use this cable in your Maki, you probably will get some warnings about accessory drain and stuff like that. So again, we will not be using this. What else we have in here? We have the, oh, we got a cigarette lighter or the 12 volt, I guess, power adapter. <laughs> And up oh, here's our rear camera, and of course our cables. Well, we got another Thinkware spudger. We got two of those. There's our installation plate for the front camera. I hate blocking film. Uh, looks like we have a little something else here. Oh, using a CPL. It's a CPL filter. Um, we got some clips, two-sided tape, manual. We came with an SD card, cool. And yeah, do not eat. So that's our dash cam. Let's move on to our battery. Oh yeah, look at this. We got more stuff here. So here we got some a fuse adapters. Cable one cable, another power cable. A microphone cable or something, some fuses, and of course the battery. So with that, we need to remove the old dash cam and get started. All right, for most jobs, I like to start the hardest part first. So we're gonna start with the rear camera. As you see, I already moved the uh, black cover. You just unclip it from here. I'll loop it from the wires. And you have this black panel right here. Now this black panel is looped right here. So you want to try to, if you can, pop it out from the back first. Or maybe I get it loose from the center here. Just pop it off. If you can bring it from the back. The part of loops out, as you can see right here. And we already have our black U camera in. So that's going to need to come off. Place of our thick view. So they just come off with a nice little pole. And if you're in a room like the old gas like I am, just get your knife out and we just scrape this thing off. Careful not to scratch window tint or anything like that if you have installed. So my previous dash cam installed video, which I'll roll link below, I took a, a, a string, just like this, and I tied a nut to the end. And using a strong magnet, I was able to basically get the string from here and I'll pull it through this bush in here, down here, into the roof line up here. You can uh, just unclip this thing here. I did not do that because I don't want to you know, risk mess up the weather seal. But um, again, here's a little clip of that right now. Um, be very careful because it did take over an hour to do. And it's, Really difficult, but either way, since we already have a wire pulled through, I'm just going to use that. We're going to tie our string to this and pull this back through. So now I take our new cable. So here's a micro USB. I think both sides of this cable are the same. Oh no, we have an F here, so I think that means front and R. So we have R, that means rear. So now we're gonna pull this one up through the hole. 
All right, I kind of thought about it. And to make sure we don't, <laughs> we have a backup plan, I'm gonna pull the mortar string through. So I got quite a bit to work with. And we're going to tie, again, the cable with the R on it, somewhere in the middle of the string. That way, worst case scenario, we have plenty of string to work with if we uh, the knot gets loose or something. There we go. So not nice knot tied up. Now let's see how easy it is to pull this big ass cable with a little hole. We'll go ahead and get it started best we can. Just like that. And pull our cable in. Oh, come on, buddy. Ugh. So you can feel it, and you can hand on, kind of help with your fingers to squeeze it through. Let me give you a better view here of what I'm doing. So I'm pulling the cable through, but I'm also kind of assisting as my fingers down here. Come on. It is not easy. And look at that. We have our cable. Okay. Now we want to leave this tied up until we are completely done. Because previously <laughs> I took the string off and I end up pulling this back through the car. So to prevent anything like that, we're gonna leave this just like this for now. So the next thing next is we're going to take our cable here and we're gonna feed it all the way to the front. I'm gonna do a quick lapse here. If you need to see more detail, watch my previous dash cancellation video. So now that we got our think view wire wired this far on the passenger side, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, part of the section here. Again, it's just snapped on gently, but a little force. So unsnap it. It'll come right off. And then you push the mirror down, just like so. All right. So now we're at the point where we remove our old broken black view. Now the Mach-E does come with uh, an IRR windshield, so the radar on this camera will not work, but we'll still test it. Um, and because I don't think we need the heat block and film, but we're still going to use it. I think it'll look better on the outside with it on. Right below you. So, I'm taking the back part of the camera, just adding the back plate onto it. So we got our camera on, the back plate on. Okay, now let's try to get this lined up. 
perfectly first try. Now, I see if that's going to work. So, in addition to your year 3000, make sure you got plenty of clearance for all of your cables, especially this USB cable right here. Well, no pressure on that, or we'll come loose and give you issues later on. And, wire position camera, make sure you use your app to use this nice little pattern to help line everything up with. All right, so this part here for the power. Like I said, we're using our hardwire line right here. So we want to make sure we get this. And also notice our battery itself has a little cable port as well. So we're going to run both these wires across the roof liner here, down the pillar to our fuse block area down here. So let's go ahead and start riding on those. Okay. So now that we're about here, we get our spudger. We're gonna use it to help us guide our wires inside. Now that we're down here, we get our wires, move them up and over. There are two clips here you can undo, and we are in. Just like that. So now we're gonna access our fuse boxes right here, right here below the passenger glove box. This just grab the side of it, it comes right off. All right. So first things first, we take a power cable here. You're gonna notice on the end of it, it's going to have a ground, a yellow and red cable. These are coming from the dash cam. And on the power side, the cable, you're gonna notice it also has some red, black, and white wires here. So we're gonna use our Wagos. We're gonna connect these three wires, black to black, white to white, yellow, yellow, and red to red. So these are nice already trimmed for us. Just pull those little bits off. I'm just gonna run around to cut this guy. Let's strip that off. Let's get our way goes out. Yellow. One on the red. And one on our black. Make sure they're nice and snug on there. So let's go ahead and strip these wires out here. I'm going to get myself more room to work with on this cable because it's pretty thin. Now let's connect our wires. Red to red. Make sure no metal is hanging out. It's all covered up. Yellow to yellow. And black to black. So that's our dash cam powered up to the battery. Now we just gotta power our battery now. So looks like our battery has a green cable for ACC in. 
and it has a battery plus and a ground cable. So again, our battery, we take our B plus, and away go, clip it on there. Then we're gonna go to our accessory wire. Strip this wire. And get another way go. And connect it like so. So, these are a longer one for the battery wire. Like so. All right, so you can see our fuse box. Our accessory wire is going to go to fuse three. And our constant power is going to go to fuse 13. So we're going to go ahead and connect fuse three first for accessory. You see, like my wires a little bit. Let's so see what I'm doing. So our green wire, our fuse. This is gonna go to fuse three, which is right here on the bottom, towards the bottom. I think this actually needs to go up like this. There we go. So our chassis wire is connected to fuse three, and our power wire. Our battery wire is going to go to fuse 13, which is right here, in like so. So now we wire it up. So next we need to get our ground wire, wherever you went. Right here. So the ground wire here, we're going to pull a little bit off, get a little slack. We need access to a ground point, which is behind here, our glove box. Get a glove box, and get out. And right here, we take this part here, we're just gonna clip it off like that. And your glove box, which you put right here, it's not actually able to come down free. Like so. And we're gonna hook our ground wire up to this bolt right there. All right. So now that our ground wire is connected, as you can see right there, we're gonna pull this guy down, kick our glove box up, make sure you're, you're all connected right here still. Bring this up. We're gonna pop that guy back on right here. Like so, and these will just pop right on in. All right, so let's hook up our output cable. Like so, and connect it up. All right, so for what I understand is lows for low charge, low speed charge, and highs for high speed charge. And I think you can use either or for the Mach E. Um, because I don't want a lot of heat, I'm gonna keep mine on low, which is normal speed. And with that, we should be all powered up, ready to turn on. I guess now we just go here, we hit low. We have some lights. All right. So I'm gonna try to do it using Samsung 256 uh, Extreme SD card. Go go with power, battery, and power. Look at that, we got power. Memory card format required. And do it. So now we're gonna get our cables up here. And touch the butt kind of liner. These two cables here, there's a little clip right there. I like to put these under that clip. Let's get a little more secure. Like so. 
You see that? I got them clipped in right there like that. Oh, you stop right now. I don't have time for that. We'll figure you out in a second. Turn you back off. All right, finish checking our wires. There we go. All right, so now that we got the camera installed, we now need to format the SD card. To do that, we need to hold down the record button plus the Wi-Fi button for five seconds. Let's turn you back on. Memory card format required. So the Wi-Fi button record button. One, two, three. Four, Memory card format required. Five. Memory card format will now start. Okay, just for Memory the... card format completed. That's good. Please have a safe drive today. Oh, that's a very nice of you. So I think she is working now. All right, now that we got the front all wired up, let's get the back done. All right, so I pulled just enough wire through. She's taking a lot of my slack still back here, which I did on purpose, because we're gonna be tucking this on the inside over here. Let's get our cable. I think we're done with our, I think we're good with the white screen now. So let's take our string off. String back through. There we go. And move our rear camera. So we want this to be like so. Okay. So we want this nice centered. Just about right here. We're just going to stick it on, like so. That's nice and level there. Let's get our cable and connect it up. There. Let's take our big ass cable. Let's pull this guy up. Tuck all this cable right in here. Back in place, make sure you get your panel, double check all your clips are still intact. If you're missing one, now it's time to look for it. Again, yeah, these C parts up front here. So we're gonna set those in first. Like that, and then push the back on. Just go just like that. All right, so her camera is installed. Just a little bit. We can down so we can hook it all. So now let's figure out the rush cable. We've already got our seal here in place. Let's get our seal here in place. Hi right, everyone. Um, so it's been a few days now. I'm still trying to figure out where to put the battery. Uh, the last few days, I've been using it in the, here in the glove box, all wired up through the back here. And I've had a buck stuck like this, it stayed, it stayed pretty well. But if I use the glove box here, it might even have it higher up like this and stick it with some two-sided tape. Or better yet, some Velcro, two-sided tape. Um, so that has been working the last few days. The downside is it does take up room in our glove box. Um, the other spot I've been looking at is right here below the passenger seat. You see we have a little hole right here. We can run our cable through to the front. But there's really not a lot of room in here. And getting this battery up on the shelf here behind us under the seat right here, you know, is gonna be really, really difficult, if not impossible. So, oh, 
So the other, the final area I was thinking of is um, over the back. So we grab the battery here. See, I've already moved everything out of the back. It's so easy to show this, but below the floorboard here, you can see we have just a little divot right here, and this battery fits in this divot almost perfectly. So we set the battery right there. We have this on the lower brackets. You can see it. It kind of slides on it. So I think it is sliding on the battery, but not very much. But my thing is too is it's really loose here. And we put Velcro on this, it'll make it even higher. So to be honest, I really don't like this area either. Um, anyway, um, I need to think about this. I'll get back to you. Well, my idea was to put the glove box, Velcro it in right here at the top. So you still got plenty of room for the glove box. But as you can see, that's not gonna work. So it's been a few days, I still can't find a great place to put this bloody battery. I've tried in the back, I didn't quite like it there. It, under the seat, it's really tight squeeze. I don't like you know, putting that much pressure on the battery. Um, inside the glove box, it didn't quite work out. But I was thinking maybe I put it on the outside of the fuse cover. Cause you really don't see this cover very often, and this will still be pretty well hidden. So we're gonna give that a shot. Alrighty, so. For our Velcro, we're going to be using some industrial strength, heavy duty stick on. So if we can hold a shovel and a rake and all that, it should definitely hold our nice little battery here. It does claim hold up to 10 pounds or one pound per square inch. So with that, let's go ahead and clean the surface of our battery off. Make sure you don't spray inside any ports or electrical areas. And do make sure the battery is switched off, as you can see. We are switched off. Okay, now the battery nice and clean. I did remove the sticker here to help get more adhesive. Uh, do that at your own risk. I think you might need that for any warranty stuff. So I'll probably just hold a sticker in my owner's manual or something. Get our cover nice and clean. Like that and now for the go with the theme of the car i think i'm gonna put the hard side of the velcro on the battery we'll put the soft side on the fuse cover so with that let's get our velcro lined up here so i'm gonna put it about right there i'm gonna cut three strips of this Got three strips, a nice line, covers the battery quite nicely. Look at that. All right, now that we have the battery velcroed, let's work on our fuse cover. And again, we're gonna use the soft side of the velcro for here. So we're gonna be sticking our velcro between these two tabs here. So right from the edge here, just a little bit past to right here. As you can see, we got the Velcro all the way here to the edge and just past the tab on this side. The battery will be in the vehicle. The power port's facing to the right. Sit on the car just like so, just like this. Uh, this Velcro does need 72 hours to get its full strength, but we're gonna let it sit overnight instead. Um, that should be plenty for us. So with that, I'll see you in the morning. All right, it's the next morning now. All of our adhesive here has had a chance to go overnight. So let's go ahead and finish this install and get this project done. All right, so now that we're ready to put our cover back on, let's get our wires, move around them up, and over to the right. Make sure they're not in the way of any of these connecting points. Okay, now that we got that, let's go ahead and pop our cover back on. There we 
go. And now let's make sure your battery is off. And let's plug in our cables back in. Now to reconnect our cables. Okay, and we can turn the battery on to low. Let's get this into place. Let's see how it looks. There we go. You see it's still pretty out of the way. Normally you won't be able to see anything there at all. Is it the best place to put it? I don't know, but it's the best place I could find. So that's what we're gonna go with. Now I'm gonna go through the process of you know this cable here trimmed down, or you can zip tie it up and just push it back here as well. But I'm gonna go over the route of trimming it down. All right, we got all the wire trimmed, but I did keep this one long because I don't want to trim off these uh, filters right here. So this one wire with these two filters is still pretty long as you can see, but we're just gonna zip tie that up. But the power cables are nice and neat now. So now look at that done. Let's put this back together and zip tie some wires. And with that, we are done. I think it's a pretty clean install. Well, it's taken about a week, but at the end, we got the dash cam installed. It didn't go quite as planned, but I think it turned out pretty good. So until then, see you next time. Bye.